Hey guys, I want to have a quick chat to you today about growth hormone. Now, growth hormone is a peptide hormone. Um, we all know that it is uh, particularly good at burning fat through lipid oxidization. Um, it also promotes collagen synthesis and it does a whole bunch of other things related, related to metabolism and has also been termed the elixir of youth. But to talk to you about growth hormone, I actually have to talk to you about sunlight. Now, as our um, ancestors, drag themselves out of the oceans and onto land, they, we have then evolved under the influence of sunlight. So our biology is actually directly entrained to sunlight and lots of biological processes rely on our exposure to light. And the light gets into the body through the eyes, the retina, and of course, through the skin. Through the skin, we're talking about um, the uh, description of vitamin D, uh, D uh, synthesis, so vitamin D3 sulfate is produced via uh, a process with cholesterol in the skin and using utilizing the liver and cytochrome P450 and this cool, cool stuff and you get that immune boost from being out in the sun when the skin is exposed to it. But with the eyes, it's a little bit different. And what happens to the eyes is actually, um, it, it, it simulates more of our biology than sunlight through the skin does. So there's kind of classically two pathways described for the eyes. There's the seeing pathway, the optic pathways, which is basically allowing you to take in uh, visual information and the brain, brain basically makes up what you're seeing and fills in the blanks and does all that cool stuff. But there's also an energetic pathway, which is a pathway between the retina and the hypothalamus. And it's termed the retinohypothalamic pathway. Now the hypothalamus, which is a part that, of the uh, middle of the brain, which is very much involved with regulating our autonomic function or endocrine function, is directly linked to the pituitary glands. Now the pituitary, via sunlight stimulation, via direct sunlight stimulation through the retina, produces growth hormone. There are studies out there that show that blind people or those with cataracts um, have a diminished growth hormone synthesis in their body. They don't produce as much as seeing people. Now, once uh, cataracts have been removed, they have found that the growth hormone production returns to normal. So the key to this is just that to understand that sunlight and being out in the daytime in the sunlight and getting out of um, being indoors and wearing shades if you go out to block the sun, it's a really, it's a really good idea to get exposed to sunlight. And the, um, the thing to take home from this is just to, if you want to, increase hormone production or normalize hormone production, you have to expose the eyes to the sunlight. I'm not talking about staring directly into the sun. That would be a bad idea, but being outside in the daytime, exposing the retinas to sunlight. Now let's think about um, what can filter the, the light. If you're driving and you're behind uh, obviously the windscreen, that's filtering the light. You're not getting the same impact as being out in the light um, exclusively. If you're wearing contact lenses, that's filtering the light. If you're wearing glasses, that's filtering the light. And of course, if you're wearing sunglasses, that's completely filtering the light. And in some cases, blocking UV light, which again is unhelpful in terms of stimulating lots of very important biological processes, one of them being the production of growth hormone. So consider in the mornings when you're going about your normal routine, if you wear contact lenses or glasses and you can actually get around without them to the point that you're not gonna walk into something, put the lenses or the glasses in a bit later when you're actually indoors. Once you're indoors, you're indoors, it doesn't matter that much. You might as well put them in when, when there. But when you're outside, don't have the lenses in or the glasses if you can, because you are gonna increase your growth hormone production purely through letting light penetrate the retina to stimulate the retinohypothalamic tract. So, um, it's a great, great tip. It's a very important part of our biology that is, is um, seldom spoken about and is, is even less well understood. But there's, there is all of the information out there, all the research is out there that proves all of this stuff. And that's just one element of letting sun in through the eyes that is going to help. It's going to improve your biology by promoting endogenous, being natural from your own body, growth hormone production. Now, there's other ways to do it as well. And of course, that's exercise. We all know that resistance training at 70% uh, or above your one rep maximum has been shown to boost um, hormone to growth hormone production. It does so in response to the heavy-ish kind of resistance training. We also know that over the course of a lifetime, it takes a bit of a dive for growth hormone production. And sometimes heavy weight training isn't indicated as being something that's beneficial for aging populations depending on other factors. So there are other ways with exercise that you can also boost your growth hormone, endogenous growth hormone production. And if you haven't heard of it, um, I'd be surprised now, but let me throw this out there anywhere. Occlusion training or blood flow restriction training or katsu training as it originally was called. Now this is where you would get say a medical tourniquet, just one of those things that you would find in the hospitals if somebody had to give you an injection. 
you can pick them up from a medical supplies shop store for a couple of pounds. Um, and you basically would apply the tourniquet, uh, in this instance, for example, around the upper thighs, nice and tight, or you could use blood pressure cuffs. That's what was used in the original research, the CATSU research. Um, and then you do very, very light resistance training. And it's been shown that the occluded training, light resistance exercise, whilst with under blood flow restriction, increases growth hormone production even higher than 70% of max and higher resistance training does. So you can get away with training very, very light to very high repetitions where of course you're gonna build up a lot of lactic acid and the more lactic acid you build up in those situations, the more growth hormone you're gonna produce. So you've got another option there to increase growth hormone production in your own bodies and your clients' bodies and where's necessary, everyone should be doing this, I think. Um, so you can even consider occluding the legs and walking. So now we've put those two things together, we can try and not have any filters over the retina when we're outside in the daytime in the sunlight, get out in the sunlight as much as you can and when you're walking around, you could consider occluding the legs, putting the tourniquets around the upper thighs, walking around, you're getting a double endogenous growth hormone boost from doing so. So um, I hope you find that interesting. We have got more information coming up um, on the, ac the action of sunlight on our biology. Um, I've actually got a, a extensive blog on what I term 21st century holism, which is gonna be uh, kicking around next Friday. So look out for that. We're also going to be doing a little lecture on it. Um, so lots of good stuff coming up and hope you find that useful and I will speak to you guys soon.